All right, so we've been talking about the discrete time Fourier series. In the last video, we actually derived the equation that lets you compute the discrete time Fourier series coefficients as a function of the discrete time signal x of k. Now it's time to start working some examples and actually using that equation and finding the DTFS coefficients of different signals. Before we actually dive in and actually use the equation from the last video, though, we're going to find the discrete time Fourier series of a periodic sinusoid by doing something I call the inspection method. So sometimes we're actually given a signal where instead of plugging into the equation from the previous video, it's actually easier to use just kind of trig identities and Euler's identities associated with complex exponentials and just kind of um, by hand manipulate the original signal into the form of the DTFS. So that's what we're going to start with right here. We're going to work this example, DTFS of a sinusoid by inspection. And then in the next video, we'll rework the exact same problem, but we'll go back to using the definition of the DTFS coefficients from the equation from the previous video. Obviously, either way, we should get the exact same answer, and we will. But uh, it's kind of nice to know that given certain signal types, sometimes you can do the inspection method. It might be a little bit easier but also if you have to go with the definition and just do it that way as well. So knowing how to do either way is a good thing to know. All right, so let's go ahead and do it by inspection though to start with. We're gonna find the DTFS of a sinusoid using the inspection technique. And in this particular example, we're gonna work with just X of K equals sine of omega naught K. And omega naught is N pi, oh, I'm sorry, N naught over two pi. So that means, that this signal x of k is a periodic signal and its period is n naught. So it makes sense to be using the DTFS representation for this particular signal. Just as a way of reviewing, let's review some of our uh, complex exponential properties and Euler identities. So the most important one for this problem is a way that you can write sine of x. If you remember, e to the jx minus e to the minus jx over 2j is actually equal to this quantity right here. And now you can see that that's actually sine of x inside there, right? Actually, it's 2 sine of x. When you do all the uh, math, this first term using Euler's is cosine of x plus j sine of x. And then we subtract off cosine of x minus j sine of x. So the cosine x and the cosine x, those cancel right there. And then you have a j sine of x minus minus j sine of x, which is plus j sine of x. And you end up with 2j sine of x. So we have 2j sine of x over 2j, and that simplifies to sine x. So this is kind of a nice identity to remember. You can always write sine of x in this way for any value of x. You can do the exact same type of math. I won't go through all the details here, but there's a very equivalent expression for cosine of x. And the only difference really is you don't have a j on the denominator and on the numerator, you have e to the jx plus e to the minus jx. So this is another nice identity for cosine x that comes up time and time again in linear systems courses like this. So I'll put a green box around that. That's just a good thing to kind of uh, keep in the back of your mind. So what we're going to do in this problem is we're going to take sine and we're going to rewrite it using this identity right here. And then look what happens. We'll very easily be able to write x of k as a weighted combination of complex exponentials. Well, that's exactly what the DTFS is all about. Waiting or writing a periodic discrete time signal as a weighted combination of complex exponentials. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's rewrite x of k like this. The only difference is I don't have sine of x, I have sine of omega k. So all the x's turn into omega k's. So that's one way that I can write x of k. Remember what our DTFS representation was. It was a sum over n naught terms of numbers times e to the jar jr omega k. e to the jr omega naught k. Well, look at this, I have e to the j omega naught k's right there. So if I just kind of compare this to this, it looks like this must be an r equal one because I don't have any value there. Similarly, this right here, e to the j omega naught k times a negative one must mean r is negative one 
in that representation. And that's exactly what this is. This right here is the r equals 1 term in my DTFS sum. So that must be D1 right here, the number out front. The weight must be D1. Similarly, this has to be the r equal negative 1 term, which means this number out front must be D of negative 1, D sub negative 1. And these are the only terms, right? There's only two weighted complex exponentials. So that means my DTFS representation for this signal x of k consists of all zeros except for two values. One of those is when r equals 1. The other one is when r equals negative 1. And otherwise, we have a zero. So that's an example of find, finding the DTFS of a signal via the what I call the inspection technique. Basically, if you're lucky enough to be given a signal that consists of sines and cosines, just go ahead and use Euler identities and trig identities like this to just directly manipulate the signal into a weighted combination of complex exponentials. Once you've done that, just pick off the numbers right here and compare it to your equation, and you can figure out what all of the non-zero DTFS coefficients are. Obviously, we also want to know how to work this from the definition of the um, DRs that we derived in the previous video, and we'll go ahead and work an example of that for a very similar signal in the next video. Thanks.